Hello, John Martinez speaking. Hello, this is Adam Smith from NobelPrize.org, the website of the Nobel Prize. Great, thank you. Nice talking to you. It's a pleasure to talk to you and many congratulations on the award of the Nobel Prize. <laughs> yes, it's, it's uh, been an interesting morning to say the least. But uh, yeah, I, I feel, uh, you know, it's just quite an amazing feeling, yeah. How, how did the news actually reach you? Okay, it's kind of a funny story. Um, my wife ended up reading a book till like three in the morning. I went to sleep early. And uh, all of a sudden, she started getting all these phone calls and this and that. And she started, which is in another room. So she answered them and got inquiries from the press. So she kind of figured out that there was something going on. But um, my wife is very kind to me, so she didn't wake me up for a couple hours because she knew <laughs> I needed my sleep, <laughs> which I really, she did the right thing. So at 5.30, I got up, and then there were some reporters at our house at 6 to interview me. And, uh, you know, from then on, it's been, you know, constant uh, stream of calls and emails and the like. But it's, uh, it's been fun. That's incredible. What coolness she displayed in the face of this news. It, that's impressive. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. And but my wife is very kind and she's kind of looking out for me. So she knew what was better for me. But yes, this, this is great. <laughs> but she didn't go to sleep at all last night. <laughs> oh, poor her. I hope the book was worth it. Um, <laughs> oh, she, it's okay. <laughs> she's okay. But that's good. Every every new Nobel laureate needs a protector, and you've certainly got one there. That's good. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, she's been my press op- office too, screening calls and the like. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah it's 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 been fun. I enjoyed the interviews, and I get a, I have a lot of emails and a lot of people I haven't seen in years are congratulating me, and some of my ex students uh, um, at UCSB. It's been very nice, very kind. Yeah, that's that's nice. They're kind of coming together. And have you had a second to reflect on what it means to you? You know, you you can't you can't hope to win the Nobel Prize. This <laughs> is you know too high of an achievement. Uh, but um, I, I'm just really um, grateful that they saw this. And but you know, on the other hand, what I find is most exciting is that there's probably a thousands or more. A scientist who are working on quantum computing and superconducting qubits, and they're all getting meaningfully employed, working on quantum mechanics, trying to understand all this beautiful physics. And to me, that's kind of the most exciting part of it is that, you know, we did some experiments that really led to, you know, lots of, lots of great science. And, you know, that's kind of the, that's kind of the nicest thing, but yeah, it's it's nice to be recognized for the work we had done then, and it was such a, a interesting experience for me to work with Michelle Deveray and John Clark um, to kind of you know be trained as a scientist doing a great experiment, working with great people. Um, it, you know that was that, that was the, the exciting part, and then yeah, it's nice to be recognized. I really appreciate that. <laughs> Yeah, it was, when I spoke with John Clark earlier today, he was saying just how extraordinary that time was. How well he was saying how brilliant both you and Michelle were, <laughs> and just how you yeah. you all you all sparked off each other. It was it was obviously a very special moment. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And um, uh, you know, we all had all it contributed different ideas to making it, and, and it was just a, a time. You know, this was back when the physics of, of this system, people weren't even appreciating this was a microwave a- experiment. I mean, we had to understand and fix the most basic ideas there. And working with uh, John and Michelle, we, we, you know, quickly figured out what we had to do and got the right tools. And, you know, John was a great leader and I got to work with Michelle every day. So that was very impactful on on me. And Boy, what a great experience. I'd say anything else, just working with these people at the beginning of your career meant a lot to me. Mm-hmm. And uh, 
Um, you know, fortunately, if I've had other, you know, similar experiences in my career, but, you know, I've always wanted to look back <laughs> on what happened there and say, okay, can we reproduce that kind of spirit that I saw there? And I've been trying to do that uh, the rest of my career. Well, it's, yeah, it's good to know what you're aiming to recreate. That's excellent. And uh, and as you say, the things have developed so much in the 40 years from an intellectual question to something yeah. that is now um, a, a very much a, a question of application. That's right. And I know that you now, with your new company, Colab, you're setting out to build the world's first functioning quantum computer. That's right. I mean, that's a huge challenge still. What do you think the biggest challenge is? So I would say there are many challenges and that's kind of what's hard about it. And my particular thesis, um, since um, you know leaving Google and doing my own company, is that building a quantum computer is a little bit harder than the scientists think about because of the system engineering. You know, building a powerful computer is, is hard. So what we're particularly working on is the manufacturing of qubits and doing that much better than what people are doing right now. So I, I've really enjoyed, uh, you know, being in academia and even at Google working on that. But I really enjoy right now trying to think very practically about what we have to do to get this to work and what kind of people we have to collaborate with in order to, you know, put all the pieces together and build a quantum computer in a cost-effective, economic, a way that makes business sense. Mm. I suppose, yes. It, just like in John Clark's lab in Berkeley four decades ago, it's about bringing the right people together at the right time with the right skills. It's the right people. Yeah, that's right. The right people at the right time, really focusing in on it. And then here, it's the right people in the right time, but it's also the right companies and the right technologies. and. Um, we also think, you know, collaborating with people is different people with different skill sets is important. Yeah, it sounds like fun and it sounds like, the, yeah, it's all about intellectual curiosity. And, yeah, uh, it's a lot of fun, yes. Well, it's, um, it's a joy to talk to you and uh, I'd love to talk for longer, but I know that people are clamouring to talk to you all around. So um, it's been a huge pleasure speaking to you. And I wish you good luck with this <laughs> extraordinary day that's unfolding. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Thank you. Okay, speak soon. Nice talking to you. Thank you. Bye now. Bye-bye. Mm, you just heard a special episode of Nobel Prize Conversations. For more listening, we think you'll enjoy our brand new bonus episode, where Adam reveals what really gets our laureates celebrating. You can hear it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts.